I really want to know how people feel about the recent services honoring the late Bishop Carlton Pearson and how a certain pastor disinvited an entire community and particularly the dear friend of Bishop Carlton Pearson and sister uh, Bishop Yvette Flunder who sung with the Hawkins singers and is known for the song, Thank You, Lord, and also Special Gift, uh, featured on Bishop Walter Hawkins and the Hawkins family's album. How do you feel about that? People um, were told that if they wanted the funeral and other expenses paid for, that they had to follow their stipulations. How do you feel about that? Uh, do you feel that everyone should be welcomed in the house of God? Or if you have stipulations uh, in which certain people cannot come into your pulpit, should that be honored? It has most definitely been a lot going on in the Christian world, in the church world. And some things I'm very disappointed about about. I feel that there's no decorum and grace in the church anymore. I'm quite disturbed um, in some of the social media posts. I really think that pastors' wives and bishops' wives and young ministers in particular should go through a lot of training of what to post on social media, what not to post, how to dress, how to act. I was really disturbed by this post. Uh, I know that you love your husband, but this, you should not have done this. This is not a good look for a bishop's wife or a pastor's wife. If I were to explain all the things that a close relative of mine went through by being a pastor's wife, from members trying to poison her or feed her food that had crushed glass in it. And you knew that people were after your husband or after your children. And you knew that people were not supporting the ministry and were defying your dying husband, the pastor's uh, final wishes. But yet you never said a, a mumbling word. No. And this is something that needs to stop in the church. We need to stop, Larry Reed. We need to stop throwing comments, negative comments, and throwing off on people across the pulpit, on social media, and other um, avenues of communication. It is not the love of God. It is not the love of Christ. It's not professional. It's just not a good look at all. And that's one thing that I loved about Bishop Carter Pearson. It did not matter how people treated him. And I hate that that happened. But he always had class, elegance, professionalism, and a positive demeanor about himself. You never saw him rash. Lady Louise Patterson and Mother Mae Blake would have never, ever, posted anything on social media. You never saw them in pants. You never saw them properly dressed as becoming the wife of a bishop. You never heard them speak ill or harsh to anyone or give any negative comments. I even had someone uh, that saw another relative of mine and they made the comment, well, I thought, I thought surely that your mother would have died first. Because this lady was a single lady and she never had um, a relationship. And well, I don't know why you think, uh, I don't know why you think my relative would have married you uh, if the mother passed away first, because he would, he never would have chosen you to begin with. But the relative was very gracious, even though they said this really mean, ugly comment, because no one wants a parent to die or a relative or a loved one to die. But yet you're going to say, because all you could think about is your flesh. 
I'm telling you, this is a dying breed. We have lost the class, the elegance within the Christian church and within our Christian community. You think you can say anything, you think you can post anything, you think you can treat people any kind of way, you think you can call people dummies, and you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even know who the people, that the people know members of your family. And, you know, I am aware of all the stories because my family also came out of Kojic. My paternal and maternal family members came out of Kojic. And even though you never really hear anything about uh, Daddy Sheard, we are most definitely aware of his father, Bishop O.S. Sheard, who was known to be a root worker and he believed in the dark arts. And he pastored a church in Lexington, Mississippi. And a lot of times you cannot rise to power, whether you're on the general board or whether um, you become the presiding bishop, unless you have roots and connections or you have family members who are in high positions. And they also have to have roots and connect connections to the founding the founder, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, as well. Now, I'm not sure if how many of you are familiar with a person named Larry Shaw, who was once running for or to be a member of the general board, but he was knocked out of place by a story that, that was put out that he raped a young girl and this story was put out by the one and only Sir William McCray. And this he did uh, at the request of Daddy Shear. Now, Larry Shaw sued them and won, but then they sued back and won their money back. And then this is how Bishop J. Drew Shear got his position. I really do not like, and even my own relatives told me um, about a bishop that was crawling on the floor because he was possessed and the saints tried to help him and you could hear the spirit talking out of him. He's mine, he's mine, he's mine. It's just so much, thing, so many things that go on in the institutional church that are swept under the rug and they're not really reflections of integrity and Christ-like behavior, but it's the result of people who are greedy for positions, greedy for power, and who want attention. Now, I was really disappointed when I learned that um, people were discriminating against Sir William McRae not allowing him to, um, they didn't want him to use the flyer with Bishop Shear's picture on it. They didn't want him. Uh, they tried to discourage people from riding his uh, van. And this is very unfortunate. And even my old relatives say that this church does nothing but take, take, take. They won't even give you a donut and coffee when you come to the convocation in Memphis. They won't even serve the people refreshments and know that they've been traveling for long distances. I'm going to tell names, dates, times, and places. I am sick of it. I am sick of it. Y'all let this stuff, this disgusting foolishness, go on and you sweep it under under the rug. I did a I did uh I did a made a flyer. Everybody else had their flyers for them courtesy driving. I made a flyer. I made a flyer and the general council of the Church of God in Christ called me within 15 minutes of sending the flyer out. Am I that important where the general council 
Jonathan Sifo, you got to call me. Then the next day, oh, I'm going to call names. I sure am. What, what, what are you going to do? Put me out? You, 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 you have already tried to do that. Then the next day, Kirk Shaw does a lie and tell the saints uh, how people in Kojic had blocked him from uh, the things that God had prepared for him and um, how people were in strategic positions and, you know, just a lot of jealousy and, 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 and mistreatment and abuse of power. And, you know, I'm really disturbed how they treated uh, this man. They don't like him because he's outspoken. They don't like how he dresses. They don't like because he wants to be eccentric or different. He wants to have nails. And then they have the nerve to say that they want people who are saved. Well, some of you bishops ain't saved. And that I know for a fact because my own family member told me I know things about Kojic that would make the hair on your head rise up. He would tell us certain things, but other things he would never tell it. He took it to his grave. But we heard many things and many different stories. And it's atrocious. And it's not of God. But I am disappointed by the behavior displayed in Bishop Cedric Daniel's funeral with Bishop Carton Pearson's funeral, events surrounding the convocation. And it's obvious, the Bible clearly says that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't love rich people more or poor people less. Larry Reed, read your Bible. Jesus came to save the whole world, not just the rich and famous. Now, I want you to see the elegance and class of Lady Gina Pearson as she gives her final remarks for Bishop Carlton Pearson on behalf of her family. And I'm the only one in this room that could capture your attention with the untold story of the great husband and father that he is. But we all know, don't we, John DeStito and Brian Keith, that this is not the time for that. Come Monday is a story that will be told in the appropriate time. But today, this moment, I acknowledge him as my greatest teacher. He taught us all some great lessons. One being how to finish what he started. He brought his family back together. And between us, there was much restoration and reconciliation between us, between the four of us, between each of us individually in these last months of his life. The second lesson that he taught us was how to exit this third dimension, how to complete and how to die fearlessly and with great courage, how to die with dignity. Loves everyone of an eternal presence that's present in each of us. Yes, the individual expression of who that universal love and expression is in each of you, in each of us, that expression of unlimited potential and possibility, that of which he saw in each of us. He called it forth in each of us. 
And that is the legacy that I want to encourage you to live. That everybody, each of us, is doing the best that we know to do. We can love in spite of. We can forgive because he first forgave us. I mean, we cannot, if you choose not to, then you short circuit the possibility of the very essence of God in you through that of sickness and illness. So as we move forward. It's spoken about everybody that meets him. He spoke life into us. He never put anyone down. As I already been mentioned, he, when he spoke to you, you were the only one in the room and he could see to the depth of your soul and prophesy unto you that which would emerge to glorify the living one. He spoke life. He, we, we're celebrating him today because remember his ever expanding compassion that embraced everyone in his soul and left nothing, no one out. He was inclusive. Thus the theology of, of inclusion. We, we indeed remember the fact that he was not a hack. Meaning, meaning that he was always on the verge of his own evolution. He was, he was never stuck in his training. He went beyond his training to embrace insights and, and revelations that took him way beyond training so that he, be, he embraced a loving God that would never have an eternal damnation. He, he embraced all people, black, white, straight, straight and, and gay and Muslim and Hebrew whatever it was he exemplified the presence of God's love that kept no one outside the kingdom Jew and Gentile just like Jesus and so these memories run deep within us but we celebrate his aliveness not merely because of our memories because memories fade sometimes but we celebrate because he was made in the image and likeness of God. That he was a distinct unit of infinite potential. That the presence of the living God does not do do-overs and never repeats itself. Because God is infinite. So, so Bishop Carlton was a one of a kind. <laughs> There's never going to be another Bishop Carlton because God doesn't repeat God because God is infinite. And so, as I always teach, if you don't do you, you ain't going to be done. <laughs> and, 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 and the bishop, the bishop was well aware it is better to live your life as yourself than to be a cheap copy of someone else. He knew this. He knew this. And so, and so we're celebrating that he was always on the verge of a great discovery of that which is infinite within all of us. That's courage. Doesn't mean you don't have fear. You only get courage when you have fear. If you have fear and move through it, you get the courage. If you have fear and don't move, you don't get the courage. So he had courage to withstand the blows of betrayal. To withstand the blows of gossip to withstand the blows of people putting him down as someone already mentioned and apologized, Bishop, for their ignorance. He walked tall anyway and brought the realm of ever-expanding good, which is called heaven, by the way, on earth as it is in the heart, mind of the infinite. And so people of faith, we don't ask the question, what is the meaning of his death? We don't ask that question. Some might say, well, you know, it was too, he left too soon, he was too young, he had so much to give. We don't ask that question, what is the meaning of his death? We reverse the question. We say, how can we give our life meaning based on knowing Carlton Pearson? And it comes very easily. We keep him alive by being a living vibrational memorial uh, by speaking life to people. No gossip. Speaking life, putting, lifting people up, not par tearing people down. <laughs> we, we become a living vibrational memorial, keeping him alive within us, giving our life meaning by expanding our compassion. Compassion is a very high form of love that understands the lack of understanding. He had compassion on people that didn't understand him. High form of compassion. 
We keep him alive by being on the edge of our own evolution. We don't get stuck in who we think we are in this moment because wherever we are right now, we're just getting started. We're always growing. And if we live at that level, if we live at that dynamic, then he lives forever, not merely because he's an emanation of the Most High, shot from the eternal presence of God Almighty, all beauty and all joy, but because our vibrational frequency has caught the meaning of his life. His life is too big to be swallowed up by death. No victory, no sting. He lives. We celebrate. God bless you. see the class and the elegance given during the final remarks of Lady Gina Pearson? Did you notice the class, the elegance, the style, even with her attire, with the hat, the gloves, the beautiful dress, very poised, um, her speech and vocabulary, were flawless, and she had every right to throw ugly remarks, to call people's names, but she chose to take the high road and show people the love of Christ with grace and style. No post on Facebook, no ugly remarks, just the class and the elegance that every pastor's wife, pastor's daughter, every minister, preacher, bishop, apostle, because how can you lead the people if your behavior is not A1 plus? How can you teach the people to go through adversity and pain with grace not arguing and bickering, because that is what the world does. Cussing folk out, calling people dummy. This is what the world does. What would Jesus do? Because I don't care how many pretty clothes you wear. Ghetto always overrides. And you may have talent. You may have beauty, but your behavior, your speech, your actions will muddy the waters. Now, I listened to the speech. Now, they had three different services for Bishop Pearson. One particular service, I didn't really care for it too much at all. Uh, I enjoyed li always listening to Archbishop Jordan 
uh, and listen to um, the pianist that was uh, related to the Polk uh, family. But they allowed him to talk about inclusion, but yet people were disinvited who were friends and who were close to Bishop Pierce is because she named herself, she calls herself Bishop. But you point your finger at her, but yet you're wearing Bishop attire and you're not a Bishop. What's with men and all this long hair? Did the scripture say something about it's a shame for a man to have long hair? And all these theatrics in the pulpit that are not in the spirit and that are not in, of God and they're not becoming to a minister, bishop, elder, pastor. It's not becoming at all. Take lessons from Carlton Pearson who never had an ill word to say about anyone who loved everyone and invited everybody. Bishop Daniels, who gave his life to the church and accomplished more than 50 people in a lifetime. What lessons have we learned? How can we do it better? We have to do better. 